Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Join us from home. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome. Welcome wherever you may be. If you're in Vermont, or maybe you're on Martha's Vineyard, or you're right here in Brookline, or, or who knows where you are. We're all together. We're here as a community, and Shabbat is beginning, and it's great to be together. We, we need each other. We need community. We know that, especially during this pandemic, we've discovered how much we need each other. And now we're about, about to enter into a day of holy time. Shabbat is beginning. The sun has already set, and darkness has come over the earth, and we're cast back to the very, very beginning of all time when God looked over all creation and saw how good and beautiful everything was. And we too can experience that goodness. We need it for our lives. We can put behind all of the stresses and anxieties from the past week and just experience goodness like we were stepping, in, stepping into the Garden of Eden at the first creation. So Shabbat Shalom to everybody. We've got a lot of good things to celebrate tonight. First of all, we have a wedding blessing, which we'll get to in just a few moments. We have our sixth graders who are uh, sharing a class Devar Torah that they've been working on with their teachers. And really, we get a chance to hear their wisdom and insights from their study of this week's Torah portion. And this week's Torah portion is well, I mean, what am I going to say? Of course, you know, it's my favorite Torah portion, but it's all, it, there's a reason it's my favorite Torah portion. It's not because it happens to be this week's Torah portion, but also because this week's Torah portion is Parshat Yitro, when the Jewish people stood at the foot of Mount Sinai and received the Torah, received the Ten Commandments from God, and entered into a holy covenant, a holy breach, with God to begin our path as a holy people. So that's good stuff. And we're gonna get a chance to hear a little bit from our, uh, from our sixth graders uh, about that Torah portion. But we're gonna begin by lighting our Shabbat candles. And so I want to encourage you to go set up your Shabbat candles if you have not already done so. If you have Shabbat candles in your house and you haven't set them up, this is a perfect time to go get them and to set them up and to light them in your home so that you can have the lights of Shabbat burning in your home as well, all right? And of course, that's a great mitzvah. So if you have your Shabbat candles, you can light them now or light them as soon as you set them up. And let's say the blessing together. As soon as I can light mine, there we go. Of course, if you blow out your match like I did in the direction of your candles, you will blow out your candle as well. All right, here we go. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kidshanu b'mitzvotav 
וציווהנו להדליק נר, להדליק נר של שבת. Shabbat Shalom to everybody. It's good to be all together. And again, we, we need each other now. So um, let's sing a little bit because singing increases our Shabbat joy and we need to uh, definitely do that. So please join me to bring in the angels of Shabbat, to welcome the angels of Shabbat. Shalom Aleichem Malachi Hashare Malachi Elion Bimelech Malachi Hamlachi Akadosh Baruch Boachem le Shalom Boachem le Shalom Malachi Hashalom Malachi Akadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hu Nile Shalom Malachi HaShalom Malachi Elyon Mimelech Malachi HaMlachi Akadosh Baruch Hu Setchem LeShalom La la la, sing at home. La 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 la, la 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 la. From the Psalms of Shabbat, the the, uh, the medieval rabbis set aside a series of psalms from the from the Bible for Shabbat, and they said those are sh- songs that you should sing on Friday night. The one of them, Psalm ninety five, begins Naria Yishenu. Come, let's sing because again, singing increases joy. So please join us from home. Shabbat Shalom. 
All right, we're now ready to greet Shabbat formally with the Lachadodi after our building up with the uh, with a little bit of singing. And the ancient rabbis they they knew as as early as the Talmud, Friday night when the sun was setting. Rabbi would walk, would walk out into the field. They would all dress in white. And as the sun was setting over the golden fields, they would say, come Shabbat. We need you. Come bless us. We know that our world is so broken. But give us just for one day a little bit of a taste of what the world would be like if it were all repaired. Give us a sense of the blessing and goodness that we know is in the world because it's all everywhere, just hidden from us, sometimes broken. And they would say, Boi v'shalom, come in peace and bless us with peace. And they would bow to Shabbat. So uh, ever since then, Jews have been singing the Lechadodi, uh, which was written in the 16th century. And we say, come Shabbat, bless us with peace and goodness. So I enjoy you, I encourage you to join. Join me as we sing.
final verse. close your eyes and to really receive Shabbat, to breathe in Shabbat, to make sure that you're really ready to rest. Make sure you're ready to put aside all those anxieties and, and uh, stresses from the past six days and just to enter into Shabbat. So I invite you, take in a deep breath, close your eyes, breathe in a deep breath, breathe in the blessing and the rest of Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Great for us all to be together. And now I want to make sure that you have the opportunity to greet the other people in our community who are here. We're going to go into breakout rooms just for two or three minutes so that you can greet other people and introduce yourself to them if you don't know them. And we wish each other Shabbat Shalom. So now all you have to do is hit on your screen, join breakout room and say hello to a few other people as we wish each other Shabbat Shalom. And if you are watching us on Facebook Live. Put a greeting in the chat so that we know that you're here and we can uh, also return the greetings to you on, on, uh, on Facebook. All right, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to the Eriks. Welcome. You just have to click join breakout room and then we'll give you a chance to join a breakout room. Estelle, do you need any help? No? All right, Lucy, Shabbat Shalom to you.
All right. Shabbat Shalom to everybody. I hope you got a chance to greet other people and um, and also to introduce yourself to other people. And uh, we wish everyone Shabbat Shalom. All right. Now we have a great moment, a great opportunity, which is to bestow a wedding blessing upon um, two members of our community who got married during the summer of, uh, of pandemic and uh, were not able to come to the synagogue and have, their have a ceremony or have a blessing on the Shabbat service in the sanctuary. Um, so um, we're gonna do it now. And it's my pleasure to spotlight Stacy Rosenthal and Alexia Pritchard and to wish you both mazel tov as we have the chance as a community to uh, offer, offer a blessing for you. And we, I just want to say, first of all, Stacy, especially, who has had a long, long connection at Temple Sinai as one of our Hebrew school teachers. Maybe you've taught Stacy some of these sixth graders in other times or is a teacher now. Um, and um, Alexia, who is newer to Temple Sinai, but has also been a member of our community. We're so glad to celebrate with you and to be able to, to celebrate tonight. So I want, I want you to picture as, as if, because I know you're on your couch there, as if you are in the sanctuary at Temple Sinai with lots of people opening their arms and opening their hearts to you. And before we, um, before we recite the blessing for you, I want to invite the two of you to say a few words. You were married on July 8th this summer in Chappaquiddick in Martha's Vineyard, a small ceremony. Everybody was on Zoom except for just a, a handful of people. Um, so now you have the opportunity to celebrate again with the, with, with the Temple Sinai community. Tell us, t I want to give you the opportunity to say a few words. Well, thank you. And this means a lot to both of us, I know. Um, we just, you know, we are very excited to eventually have a Jewish ceremony and weren't able to have one. Um, a background of our story really is that we met in 2016 at a nonprofit that I still work at. Alexia used to work there and got to know each other over a year long time. And Alexia then invited me to come visit her at this house that we're in right now on Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> There was no funny business. Was and we've like, been hey. together ever since, basically. We, it's just, we had an instant connection. I was thinking about what I would say about us today. And I just, I think you would agree that we complement each other really just extraordinarily well. Um, have similar similarities, but also have differences that are really important. And um, it's just been amazing since we got together. So um, we're very happy and we're really glad that we got married anyway. Um, don't regret that, but appreciate having opportunities to share with people in public or like this, because we really, um, our celebrations were not the way that we thought that they would be. And I would only add that uh, love at first sight is totally real. <laughs> We are separated by 25 years. I'm 25 years older than Stacy, And, um, you know, you go through your life and you have feelings about people, you know, friends, family, whatever. But, and you all, and you watch movies and television shows about love and this big love and some, some, some. And um, when it finally hits you, the thunderbolt, you, you, it's shocking because first of all, it's like, oh my goodness, this is real. And then there's total terror because am I going to get this person? <laughs> and now my life is going to be over if I don't get this person. So I was very, very lucky that uh, Stacy seemed to have felt the same way. And here we are. And I'm so grateful. So we're, we're so happy for the two of you. And it's great to be able to give you a blessing surrounded by a Jewish community tonight. tonight. So um, my prayer for you is that you the may the love that you have for each other grow and hold you close. May you wrap each other up in your love always. May you be wrapped up by the love of family and friends. May the sun of many days and years shine upon you and through you. May your goodness towards each other continue to guide your ways in the world. May your dreams come true. And when they don't, may new dreams arise. And many, many years from now, may you look at each other and say, because of you, I have lived the life I always wanted to live because of you. I have become the person that I long to be. I'm going to invite everyone now to raise their hands in the ancient Jewish blessing pose uh, as we extend our blessings to you. And I'm going to unspotlight you guys. 
you guys, you guys just received the That's blessing. Star Trek. There it is, exactly. It's of course because the boy was Jewish, and he uh, he knew this blessing from his synagogue here in Boston. So no as we, as we raise our hands in blessing to you, Alexia and Stacy, may you feel blessed. Yivarechecha Adonai veYishmerecha. May God bless you and protect you. Yair Adonai panav elecha vihichunecha. May God shine light upon you and be good to you. Yisa Adonai panav elecha vayasehim lachen. Shalom, shalom. May the two of you on your path of life together always be blessed with the blessing of shalom, of peace and wholeness. May you find it for each other. And together we say, Amen. Mazel tov. Simon Tavu, Mazel Tavu, Mazel Tavu, Simon Tav, Simon Tavu, Mazel Tavu, Mazel Tavu, Simon Tav, Simon Tavu, Mazel Tavu, Mazel Tavu, Simon Tav, Yehelano, 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 Oleho Israel, Yehelano, Yehelano. Olecho Israel, Yehelanu, Yehelanu, Olecho Israel, Yehelanu, Yehelanu, Olecho Israel. Mazel tov. We could be happier for you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Now we're going to continue with the next part of our service, starting with the Baruch Hu, the call to prayer as we call each other into prayer as a community. For creation, acknowledging all the cycles of life that we're part of. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher bidvaro ma'ariv aravim, bechochma poteach she'arim, uvitvuna mishane itim, umachalif et hazmanim, umesader takochavim. Sixth graders, here comes the longest word in the Sidur, you know it. Bemishmerotehem barakia kirtsono, bore yom valayla, Golel or mipne choshech, the choshech mipne or, umavir yom umevi laila, umavdil ben yom uven laila, Adonai, sivaot shemo el chai vikayam, tamidim lochalenu leola hamva ed, baruchata Adonai, hamaharif, aravim. And please join me, everyone, in the central teaching of Judaism, the Shema that reminds us of the incredible one the deep and profound oneness of the whole universe of all humanity of all time space and being shema yisrael adonai eloheinu adonai echad baruch shem 
כבוד מהלכותו לעולם ועד. And let's chant together. ואהבת את אדוני אלוהיך בכל לבביך ובכל נפשך ובכל מאודיך והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצווך היום על לבביך ושיננתם לבניך ודיברת פעם בשבתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ובשוכתך ובקומך וקשרתם לאות על ידיך והיו לתותפות בין עיניך וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובהישארך למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי ואיתם קדושים לאלוהיכם אני אדוני אלוהיכם אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם לאלוהים אני אדוני אלוהיכם אדוני All right, the words that we sang when we crossed the Red Sea. La, la, la. That's the central narrative of the Jewish people. Once we were slaves, but God heard our crying and our oppression and brought us out of slavery into freedom so that we could help bring the rest of the world, do our part to help others when they're feeling oppressed to, uh, to bring them into goodness as well. Please join me now in the words of the Vishamru. Proclaiming Shabbat holy, remembering that Shabbat is part of our Brit, our covenant that we have with God.
begin the next section of the service, which includes our Amidah, our standing prayer, and our opportunity to remind ourselves of our connections to uh, holiness through our ancestors. So I'm going to invite everyone to rise for the Amidah. Our sixth graders know that this next section is the standing prayer. So everyone, please rise if you can and join us in the moment of um, remembering our ancestors and then taking the opportunity for our own personal silent prayers. Adonai sifatai tiftahaku fiagi tehilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch Ataha Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohe Avotenu veimotenu, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov. Elohe Sara, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Lea, Ha El Hagadol, Agibor Vehanora, El El Yon, Gomel Hasadim Tovim, Vekone Hako, Vizoher Haste Avot Ve Imahot, Ume Vigula, Livnevnehem, Le Manchimo Biahava, Melechose Umoshia, O Magain. Baruch Atah Adonai, Magen Avraham, Vezrat Sara. Now I invite you to take a few moments, stay standing if you wish, close your eyes. Consider right now what prayer is in your heart. Nobody else knows what it is. Only It's only between you and God. So take a moment for your own personal silent prayer and we'll continue in a few moments. All right, we're going to continue with Misha Berach for the sick, asking God's blessings for people in our community and people in our hearts. 
and people in our world who are dealing with illness. And of course, we know this is a time of incredible illness and incredible brokenness in the world. And so our prayers are really heartfelt and we open our hearts. We, we say, God, please bless us and bless the world. Bless all those who are suffering with healing and with health. And during this pandemic, uh, we've had so many people in the Temple Sinai communities. Today, I just spoke with another person who I didn't know uh, had COVID who was, uh, who's hospitalized with COVID and is getting better, thank God, but we ask God's blessing for that people, for that person as well. And we're blessing, we're asking God's blessing for all those who are dealing with any kind of illness. So on this Shabbat, we ask God's blessing. By the way, you can also in the chat, you can add the names of other people who, for whom you're asking God's blessing for health and for healing and for life on this Shabbat. Karen Matheny, Robin Barinholtz, A.B. Haupt, June Ziner, Jim Ziner, Jody Kleiman, Gilbert Kleiman, Ronnie Meckler, Allison Santucci, Meredith Fine, Luann Luce, Ben Slavitt, Alan Brackup, Evelyn Opat, Samantha Kramer, Anne Fenton, Nancy Benack, Marjorie Homanoff, Richard Fritz, Don David Ben Ezer Vachaya, Michael Ben Bluma Ushmuel, Don David uh, 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 Shoshana Bat Moshe Ubella, uh, Shoshana Bat Chana Umeir, Pinchas Ben Miriam, Davida Emanuela Bat Yechelskel Ephraim, Ephraim Ben Malka Rachel, Hanan Ashre Ben Moshe Umiriam, Yeira bat Sara, Chaya Sheva bat Bela, Liora Maya bat Devora Lea, Umedad Dani. May God bless all those who are in our hearts and bless them all with life and healing and with hope and with courage. And we'll use the words for our prayer tonight that Moses used when his sister Miriam was sick in the Torah, Moses says, Anna Elna Refanala. Please, God, bring her healing. Bring them all healing. we say amen amen all right now it's time for us to turn to our sixth graders who've been studying this week's torah portion so it's my pleasure hold on let me stop sharing this screen and let me uh call on uh, one of our great sixth grade teachers ben gerson who will uh, help lead our sixth graders through their class of our torah ben Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you, Rabbi Vogel. Thank you, Heidi. Um, I am delighted to be here this evening with you all on behalf of our sixth grade class. Um, I also want to thank Matt Hoffman this evening for putting together this PowerPoint for this presentation. 
Um, over the past few weeks, um, our students have been studying Parshat Yitro in class. And this is the moment. This is the moment um, as our ancestors, as the Jewish people, we are transfixed at Mount Sinai and we receive the Ten Commandments. And our class took a special look at um, Shabbat, at one of the commandments. Um, and um, we really studied this commandment um, and um, our students responded to four possible prompts. Um, and one of those prompts was to reflect on the commandment to observe Shabbat. Describe your favorite um, Shabbat memory. What are the smells, the tastes, the sounds you associate with Shabbat? Another one of the prompts was to um, think about the commandment to observe Shabbat. Um, and that is, we are taught in the Torah to do two things. One of those things is zahor, to remember, zahor et yom ha-shabbat. Um, and the other command is shomer, to observe Shabbat. Um, what is the difference between those two different commandments? How do we uh, both observe Shabbat and remember Shabbat? Um, another one of the questions the students could respond to is um, to think about a quote by Rabbi Chaim Nachman Bialak, um, a very famous 19th century rabbi who taught more than the Jewish people have kept Shabbat, Shabbat have kept the Jewish people. What does that mean? What does that mean to you? And finally, the students could choose a poem to respond to. Um, and this evening, our students will be our teachers. Um, and that's always a special opportunity here at uh, Temple Sinai. And their words are very beautiful, as you will, um, as you will see. And um, they really do speak from the heart. So um, yeah, so I will turn it over to the students now. And we will begin with question one, to reflect on the commandment to observe Shabbat, describing their favorite Shabbat memory. And we will begin with, I believe it is Ben Hagen. Ben. I'm not sure if Ben is here. Oh, Ben, there you are. Go for it, Ben. Read out loud. Tell us your words. Ben, I think you're muted. Go ahead, Ben. We can hear you now. Go for it. Oh, Ben, I don't think we can hear you. I think there might be a problem with your microphone. Okay, yeah, ben, now you're muted again. Ben, we're going to go on to the next person, and we'll come back to you and try to figure out. Uh, I think your sound might be turned off. Your microphone might be turned off, not muted. Okay. Let's go to Pearl next. OK. Um, so here's my spot memory. It's kind of like a poem, but also a memory. It's like a very descriptive poem. I remember the hectic hour of getting ready, the brushes flying through the air, fancy outfits being put on, the makeup and showers, the fancy, the fancy shoes and dangle earrings. I remember the guitar strings as the parade through Girls Row began, as we rushed to the door and made our way out through the parade. We all headed, we all were heading towards the Hadaro Hell. We took pictures, connected with other campers and chose our seats. The hollow was covered, the grape juice was set. All we needed to do was say our Shabbat prayers. We lit the candles and sipped the juice and split the hala. Now it was time for Shabbat dinner. I remember the smells from the kitchen that flooded through the dining hall as our counselors ran to get our dinner carts. We moved to the outdoor sanctuary after dinner to pray and sing. Then we danced for hours, not noticing the time. Then we finally came together at the end of the night to sing Hashki Venu, finally putting an end to the night. Thank you, Pearl. Thanks. And I believe Ben is now ready. So let's go back to Ben. One of my favorite Shabbat memories was at summer camp. Me and my friend had a blast because we were able to celebrate it as a unit um so it was like a mini party 
We had to recite two prayers and then we were able to gorge on hala and ice cream. <laughs> then we just ran around the camp. This is why it is fun to celebrate Shabbat at camp. Thanks so much, Ben. And now we will continue with Caleb, Caleb Bess. Um, thinking about Shabbat brings back mem many memories and thoughts. One of mine isn't so much as a memory, but a way that brings me back to focus on what is happening. That reminder is the smell of papa. When it's coming out of the oven, it's hard for your mouth not to water. It is very hard to resist the taste, so I have to fight the urge to take a piece. Um, it also reminds me how it is Friday and it is Shabbat. For me, that's the personal reminder that it is Shabbat. Thank you, Caleb. And next we have Addie Gordon. My favorite Shabbat experience was at Crane Lake Camp. Every Shabbat at COC starts with the Parade Up Girls Row. The boys come up Girls Row with the music teacher and their girls join in once it reaches their bunk. We all sing songs until we get to the front lawn. Then we wait until dinner is ready. Once dinner is ready, we go into the dining hall where we where we are all immediately swarmed with the smell of schnitzel and challah. On Shabbat, we can sit wherever we like. We don't have to sit with our bunk. We say the Shabbat blessings, and then we fill our plates with the various foods. Okay, thanks, Addy. And next we have Ruby Romer. Two summers ago, I went to a Jewish takeaway camp called Eden Village. Shabbat Eden Village included dressing in all white, a very long prayer, and then a lot of good food. I have men many memories from my first Shabbat at Eden Village, some good and some where I'm very confused at what was happening. During the service, there were many prayers and songs in Hebrew that I do not understand. There was one point in the service where we were told to find a place around you, and then there would be silence. I realized this was to be speaking in the surroundings for me too. When the service was finally done, it was time for Shabbat dinner. There were fish, tofu, which apparently I was not allowed to have because I was not a vegetarian, and very good fruit, fruit cobbler. Overall, the night was fun, and I learned more about appreciating Judaism, even if I did not understand the whole service. I understood it was a time of joy, peacefulness, and the message. Great. Thank you, Ruby. And our next question is, the Torah commands us to do two things. We are to remember Shabbat and observe Shabbat. What is the difference between remembering and observing Shabbat, and how do we accomplish both? And we will hear from Liam. OK. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. To remember Shabbat is to honor the day that God rested and to obey God's commandment for all to rest on Saturday. To observe Shabbat is to celebrate the holy day and practice the rituals. Remembering Shabbat is about the Jews taking a day to relax and reflect on the previous week. It means to carry out the traditions of the Sabbath with a purpose and to understand why we celebrate it. On Shabbat, my family and I light candles and recite the blessings. As we sit down to eat, we sometimes share a part of our week. In this way, we are observing Shabbat. We also watch a family movie, eat together, and read together. On Shabbat, we relax, reflect, and refresh. Thank you, Liam. Next up, Adam. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. If you remember Shabbat, you might say, oh, today's Shabbat. But if you observe Shabbat, you say, today's Shabbat. When are we going to services? Basically, remembering Shabbat is just your brain signaling that it's Shabbat. And because every Friday is Shabbat, you remember it. But if you observe it, you are saying the prayers, you don't have any electronics, and after Shabbat is over, you have Havdalah. And that ends Shabbat, meaning there is a new week. And if you just remember, maybe you don't do those things. But it's still important to remember. For observing, you're doing, and for remembering, you're thinking. But it's also important to remember it, because if you for, if you just observe it, then on Friday night, you won't remember, oh, it's Shabbat. So you have to do both to fully observe and remember Shabbat. Thank you, Adam. And we're going to move on to Zara. I 
think the difference between remembering and observing Shabbat is that you don't have to celebrate Shabbat to remember it, but you do have to celebrate it to observe it. For example, you can know about Shabbat and remember things like when it takes place and what your traditions are. You can also rem reminisce about Shabbat spent with family and friends. On the other hand, you can't observe Shabbat without perceiving it, and you can't perceive Shabbat unless you celebrate it. So the easiest way we can accomplish both of these things is by celebrating Shabbat. And if you observe it enough, then you're probably going to remember it. Thank you, Zaha. Next, we have Caleb Was. The difference uh, from remembering Shabbat and observing Shabbat is that if you just remember Shabbat, you might be like, oh, today is Shabbat, and that is all you do to acknowledge it. If you observe Shabbat, then it would be like, oh, today is Friday, so I go to temple. It is sort of like if it was your mother or your father's birthday, but all you did was say, it's my mom's birthday. But on, if, it was, if on the other hand, you made a card for her, then you are observing it. In order to observe Shabbat, you have to do more than just remember it's a special day. Remembering the holiday is not actually doing anything to celebrate it. It is also important to not only celebrate Shabbat, but to know why you are celebrating it. All right, thank you, Caleb. All right, the third question is from Rabbi, is a quote, Rabbi Chaim Nachman Bialak. Reflect on the quote, more than the Jewish people have kept Shabbat, Shabbat has kept the Jewish people. And we will hear from Jasper. Shabbat keeps the Jewish people because without it, people will work and not stop working. Shabbat gives people a chance to rest and reset for the next week. During the week, you are with strangers and people you don't know, but Shabbat lets you be with your family and people you do know. It also allows you to think over your week and realize what you've accomplished. Shabbat should be something you look forward to every week. This is why Shabbat keeps the Jewish people more than Jewish people keep Shabbat. Thank you, Jasper. Noah. Okay. Here are the reasons why Shabbat has helped me and other people in life. One way Shabbat has helped me is just by taking a rest. For example, if you have if you had a hard week at work or if you had a tough day at school, then Shabbat is the time to get to time to let go of those worries and think about other things in life. A second way Shabbat has helped me is by spending time with my family. And the week in the week it is sometimes hard to that hard to do that because of work and online classes, but Shabbat can really bring us together. Thank you, Noah. Dylan. To me, the quote, more than the Jewish people have kept Shabbat, Shabbat has kept the Jewish people, means many different things. One example is that the holiday has been around for thousands of years and we still celebrate it today. It also means that people around the world celebrate it and that kind of connects us. You're meant to celebrate Shabbat with your family, so it brings families together every week to have a nice dinner together and spend time with each other. Lastly, lots of people celebrate it in different ways and you and maybe you might be able to experience it differently. Thanks so much, Dylan. Now we're moving on to Luke. The Jewish people have celebrated Shabbat for a very long time, and even through hard times, they have always um, had Shabbat to look forward to. Sometimes they even had to celebrate it in secret. Shabbat has always been a time to help reset our minds and have, good, have a good time. It's when your family all gets together. The quote, more than the Jewish people have kept Shabbat, Shabbat has kept the Jewish people, reminds us that Shabbat has helped Jewish people by giving them hope. Shabbat is what they looked forward to every week, especially when they were being mistreated by other people. It has helped the Jewish people through hard times by making sure they were okay during terrible times of our history. Beautifully said. Thank you, Luke. Maddie. Hi. Um... More than the Jewish people have kept Shabbat, Shabbat has kept the Jewish people. Says Rabbi Chaim Nachman Bialik. Yeah, this quote made me think. I had a lot of time on my hands to think. At first, I thought it meant that Shabbat stayed with us. Unlike Christianity, Jewish holidays have stayed the same for centuries. But soon after I was introduced to this quote, I started thinking more deeply about it. I realized that Shabbat cares for us. Shabbat gives us a Friday to look forward to. So that even when we are in our hardest times, there's still something to look forward to. Shabbat gives us something that has stayed the same for centuries, something normal. So after a long week of thinking, I can say that if anything stayed normal during this pandemic, it would be Shabbat. Throughout this pandemic, Shabbat has kept the Jewish people. I think we can all relate to that. Thank you, Maddie. And lastly, the students had an opportunity. They could choose to write a poem about Shabbat. Um, and just to remember to include how things feel, look, taste, and smell. 
And um, we are going to hear from two students who decided to write a poem. So we are going to hear first from Molly Cohen. This was um, before COVID, what my Shabbats would be like. Um, but okay. <laughs> the week cycle begins again. School, work, friends, and family. Another day, another hour, another minute. Finally, the week's rush comes to a hush. In the car with my dad listening to music. When we pull up, we rush inside. My aunt and grandmother's hair dyed. Meeting each other with hugs and hey. Talk, talk, talk. Time for candles. We all come to the kitchen, my uncle wearing sandals. Everyone is quiet and still during the blessing. Finally, time for dinner. Everyone walks to the table covered entirely with food. So many salads. You can't forget the blessing for wine and challah. Everyone digs in, passing food and eating, silent but also loud. Everyone cracking jokes and talking about their weeks. After dinner, we all help clear. Finally, my favorite, dessert. Always some, always some concoctions, always something delicious. After a long night, it's over. We drive home and then the week cycle begins again. Very nicely done. Thank you, Molly. And Lily. Um, Shabbat at camp. Shabbat. We laugh and braid our hair. We watch the boys as they walk down girls row. We chat waiting for the food. We eat and talk until we can't eat anymore. We dance wishing the night would never end. We can't wait for next week. Shabbat. Thank you so much, Lily. All right, and to the entire sixth grade class, thank you for inspiring us this evening. Thank you for being our teachers of Torah. Um, and also thank you to your parents um, for your participation as well and for being here. Um, and I look forward to seeing you this Sunday. I look forward to more discussions um, you know, throughout the course of the year. Um, and with that being said, I turn it back to you, Rabbi Vogel. Shabbat right. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Ben. Thank you to uh, one of our other sixth grade teachers, Sarah Oakner, who is with us. Thank you to our director of education, Heidi Smith Hyde, for making sure that all of our students have the opportunity, grades three, four, five, and six, to give a class to our Torah and uh, for providing so much good guidance. Great job, sixth graders. Thank you so much. And um, I just have to briefly point out the, um, the incredible power and passion we heard from so many of our students who talked about their beautiful experiences at, at observing Shabbat at Jewish summer camp. And um, uh, I want to let everybody know that the Jewish, first of all, there are gr many great Jewish summer camps. Um, the plan right now is for all of the Jewish summer camps to be open this summer. And there are still some, now that may change, but it, it all depends on what, this, what the governor of every state and the board of health in every state says. But right now the camps are expecting to open and um, we hope that all of our campers will, will be able to go to camp. And um, the two camps that uh, we're connected to in the Berkshires, are Camp Eisner and Crane Lake. And then there's another camp that is connected to the reform movement, which is the side, Six Point SciTech, which is a great camp. And you can see the um, website up here at the top. There is still room for campers to enroll in camp this summer. And we wanna make sure that nobody misses out on that great experience to be back with friends. This year, uh, camp will be adjusted so that everyone can be safe. Um, and you're gonna find out what those adjustments will all be, but don't lose out. If, you, if your plans are not yet clear for the summer, jump on going to Jewish summer camp right now. All right, great. Thank you so much to our sixth graders for teaching us Torah and helping us think about Shabbat. We're gonna continue with our service with the concluding prayers, first with the Aleinu, which reminds us of our obligations. It is Aleinu, means it's upon us. We've got stuff to do in the world. We have to be engaged in repairing our broken world. So please rise for the Aleinu. Aleinu l'shabeach l'adon hakol, l'atet gidula l'yotzer breshit, shehu note shamayim v'yohosed aretz, Umoshav ye karo hova shamaim, mimaal, Ushkinatu zobig of hemiromim, Hu elohe no, eh, od.
ואנחנו קוראים ומשתחווים ומודים לפני מלך מלכי המלכים הקדוש ברוך הוא. Two lines from the bottom of the screen. על כן נקווה לך אדוני אלוהינו לראות מהרה בתפארת וזכה לתקן עולם במלכות שדי ונאמר והיה אדוני למלך על כל הארץ ביום ההוא ביום ההוא יהיה אדוני אחד ושמו 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 All right, we recite Kaddish on this Shabbat, people who are dear to us, who are in our hearts, who have passed away, and their memory shall always be for a blessing. We remember these individuals on our yard site list who passed away at this week in the calendar in previous years, and we hold them close to us. R Lillian Angoff, Mini Laser Bacalar. Isidore Bernstein, Alan Blum, Isaac Kamhai, Samuel Cohen, Esther Salman Dort, Joseph Ellen, Marilyn Klein Fine, Benjamin Friedman, Stephen Lewis Guinness, Edith Green, David Greenglass, Sue Mench Hecht, Eva Herskovici, Leroy Homer, Dora Schur Eisenbaum, Morris Kaplowitz, Isabel Karp, Sadie Klingenstein Clow. Sophie Crandler, Doris Lavian, Edward Jacob Levinson, Leo Levy, Josefina de la Paz, Janet Hellman Perlman, David Perizzo, Sarah Rifkin, Sally Rotman, Stella Skolnick, Amy Seltzer Perlman, Aaron Sibley, Patty Stark, Mary Stefani, Carl Thurr, Leo Weinberg and Rose Goldstein Weiss. In the period of Shloshim, the past 30 days, we remember these individuals who passed away and we, um, we offer our condolences to their family members. In the past 30 days, Selma Grubert, mother of Ellen Grubert, and we, we get, offer our condolences to Ellen. Um, uh, in the past 30 days, we remember Peter Tischler, longtime Temple Sinai member, husband of Siggy Tischler, father of Jordan Tischler and Allison Tischler, grandfather of Ellie Tischler, and father-in-law of Lori Tischler. We offer all of them our condolences. I think by mistake, I read Amy Seltzer Perlman's name in the yard site list, but she passed away uh, just in the, in the past 30 days. She's the cousin of Steven Seltzer. And Steve and Rochelle, we offer you our condolences tonight. And we're also remembering Evelyn Seltzer, aunt of Stephen Seltzer, who passed away just a few weeks before uh, her daughter, Amy. Uh, and Steve we, and Rochelle, we offer you our condolences on her passing as well. Please name others in the chat for whom you will be reciting Kaddish. And together as a community, again, I invite you to rise as we recite the Mourner's Kaddish and we have the opportunity to thank God, to praise God, who is the source of life and love and caring in the universe and in our own lives. Together, Yit Gadal, Vit Kadash, Shemei Rabah, Be'alma, Divra, Chirute, Ve'amlich Malchute, Be'chayechon, Uv'yomechon, Uv'chaye, Dechol Beit Yisrael, Ba'agala, Uv'izman, Kariv, Ve'imru, Amen. Yehe Shmei Rabbah Mevarach Le'olam Ulalmei Almaya Yit Barach V'yishtabach V'yit Pa'ar V'yit Romam V'yit Nase V'yit Adar V'yit Ale V'yit Halal Shmei Dekudasha Brichu Le'ela Min Kol Birchata V'shirata Tushbechata V'nechemata Damiran Be'alma V'imru Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabbah Min Shemaya V'chaim Aleinu V'al Kol Yisrael Ve'imru, amen, ose shalom bim romav, hu ya'ase shalom alenu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'al kol yoshve tevel, ve'imru, amen. You may be seated. Okay, Shabbat shalom now. It's my, it's my pleasure to um, turn things over to Charlie Homer.
president of Temple Sinai for some Shabbat announcements. And I will ask Charlie to unmute himself and share us some things about what's going on in our community. Charlie. Yes, well, there's quite a bit going on in the community, but Shabbat Shalom to everyone. And again, thank you, especially to Ben and Sarah and Heidi uh, for your leadership and teaching all the wonderful sixth grade students who gave us so much enlightenment uh, uh, this evening uh, with their teaching of Torah. So thank you so much. Um, uh, after services tonight, I invite you all to join us in the Oneg and the link will be available or is already available in the chat. Um, Tomorrow morning, we have a Shabbat community minion, uh, which is at 9.30 in the morning. For the younger members, we also have a uh, Tat Shabbat tomorrow morning, also starting at 9.30 in the morning. Um, and again, for the younger members on Sunday, we have Katantan for th th uh, the three and four-year-olds at 10 o'clock. Later in the day on Sunday, we have uh, a number of exciting programs. We have an adult learning program focused on mindfulness and Jew Jewish values. The Neil Matenko will be leading for us. That'll be at 11, 10 a.m. And then the afternoon, a very special event, which is our 12th annual Jewish Poetry Festival at 2 p.m. We have a wonderful uh, guest, uh, noted poet, novelist, and activist, Marge Piercy. And again, invite all of you to join. It'll be a remarkable event. Monday evening, we have the Temple Sinai Racial Justice Book Group. Uh, we're going to start our discussion of Maragad's The Color of Love, uh, which is just a wonderful book. I encourage you all to join. That's at 7.30 p.m. And just advance notice for next Friday evening, we have new member Welcome Shabbat. Encourage all of you again to rejoin us uh, and to welcome our new members to our community. So thank you and Shabbat Shalom. All right, thank you, Charlie. Thank you very much. Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Um, and uh, just looking a little bit further ahead, I just wanna remind everybody that the next Jewish holiday is coming up very soon, the holiday of Purim, which we'll celebrate on Thursday night, February 25th. And I especially wanna encourage everyone to sign up to be a mystery Mordechai and be able to deliver and receive secretly uh, Mishloach Manot, uh, treats to our friends, uh, Hamantashna and other things, and also especially to our sixth graders and maybe their siblings, um, and also to all adults, to sign up to, uh, for our two-minute talent show. If you have a specific talent, maybe a dance or a card trick or a funny joke that you can tell and share with us in two minutes or less, we want to include that in our two-minute uh, talent show on the night of Purim. And then the Purim, our Purim celebrations will continue in religious school classes on Sunday morning after that. So that's, uh, mark your calendar, um, Thursday night, uh, February 25th. All right, we're going to continue now with blessings. There's the temple, by the way, in case you forgot what it looks like. Uh, it's still standing there. I was there this morning and it's spick and span and looking spotless. Uh, we hope to get back there one day soon. Stay tuned about that. But we're going to move along to Kiddush. And I invite you to raise your glass of wine or grape juice as we pronounce Shabbat holy with sweetness. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri HaGahafen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav v'ratzavanu v'shabat kodesho b'yahava uvratzon hinchilahanu zikaron lemahase v'reishit ki hu yom tehila lemikra ekodesh zeicher letziyat mitzrayim divanu v'achata. Vultanu kidasha Mikol hamim Vishabahat kod shecha Beahava uvratson in khaltanu Baruchata adonai Mekahadesh Ashabat Amen. L'chaim.
right. And now, because it's a tradition, to bless those at your Shabbat table, to bless your family on Friday night, I want to ask everybody to raise their hands one more time, but this time for each other, for, for the whole community, and especially for your family. If, if, you're, uh, if you're a parent and your kids are nearby, I want you to place your, your hands over them. Uh, if you are on your own tonight um, at home, know that the whole community is blessing you and that you are offering your blessings to the whole community as we ask God's blessing for each other. Yivarecha Adonai Vishmerecha. May God bless you and protect you. Ya'er Adonai Panavelecha Vihunecha. May God shine light upon you and be good to you. Yisa Adonai Panavelecha Vayasem Lecha. Shalom, shalom. May God bless you and look upon you with goodness. And may you always have God's blessing of shalom, peace, and wholeness, especially on this Shabbat, wherever you are. Amen. Shabbat shalom. And last, we're going to conclude with the blessing over challah. If you don't have a challah at home, you can maybe lick your screen and taste that good looking challah that's, oh, don't do that, that's gross. But make a mozi over challah. Please join me. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lechem min haaretz, amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Please join us in the in the Oneg. Olam chesed yivanei la 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 Olam chesed yivanei Oh, hello, Molly Jackson. La 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 Celebration continues on the Shabbat Oneg. The link is there in the chat. Meanwhile, Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Join us tomorrow morning for Shabbat services, 9.30 a.m.